Hello there everyone, welcome to a new video. It is me Desiree and this is the part one of my hypothetically curated collection series I'm doing for January. Uh, this is going to be a series where I talk about if I curated my collection, these are the things I would keep. I love the idea of a curated collection. I love that idea and I love that thought of just having your favorite, favorite things, your favorite formulas, favorite colors, and then you reach for them all the time. And I've always wanted to do this, so I thought, you know what? I'm gonna do it right now. Where's the last one? There it is. Um, so today we're talking about my curated highlighter collection. And if all of my makeup disappeared and I moved and the box fell off the truck and I lost everything, these are the things I would feel a loss. Like, where is that one highlighter? Where is that favorite thing? That's what I want. Over all the other things, these are the five I could happily go with. Don't, hey, stop licking the carpet. These are the ones I could happily go with for pretty much the rest of my life and be perfectly happy with them. I love the formula, love the colors, love the way they look on my skin. I am going to demo one today because I can't really describe it. And yeah, let's just get into it. Let's talk about that one. So if there's one highlighter I could use for the rest of my life, it's this one from Ciate. This was in a yearly favorites two years ago or something. When I discovered it, this is the moon dust and this is what it looks like. It is so beautiful. They have a couple of different shades of this and I've wanted them, but I don't want them at the same time because this one I think is just perfect for me. It is beautiful. This formula really reminds me of the Dior highlighter formula. I can't just remember the name of those right now, but on the skin, it just kind of blows out and diffuses into all this like nice, beautiful, shimmery glow. I am going to put this one on today. I just love it. The packaging, really beautiful. I dropped it yesterday and broke off. Oh, look, there's a little piece. Nope. Am I going to get it? I broke off this little piece and when I opened it, I was like, the powder is going to be busted, but it wasn't luckily. But now my compact has a little chip, but it's just a really nice, beautiful compact. It is a ton of product in here. This has five grams, which is quite a bit for a highlighter. I use this all the time and I have not even made a dent in it. I also got a small sample size from Ipsy and that one I'm never going to finish. I take it with me traveling whenever I go somewhere. It's so much because you don't need a ton of this in order to look really, really beautiful. Um, and I just adore this formula. Like I said, I feel like it's Dior. Like it's way more high end than it seems. I'm going to put it on with a brush. Let me, let me clean my brush real quick. One of my favorite highlighter brushes. I also got this in an Ipsy bag. It's from SL Miss Glam. It's a wonderful highlighter brush. But I am just going to, hey, stop licking the carpet. He's just making some licking sounds in the background put it on all right let's see if you can see how this highlight works and my highlighter i do enjoy hold on one sec okay just making the licking sound that's all i can hear um i do enjoy my highlight to be kind of in my blush because i do like my blush to mix in with the highlighter and i hope you can kind of see the beautifulness of this in real life it just kind of explodes a little bit. I was, oh my God, I was gonna say something. So that's what she said. I'm not going to, um, but it kind of just diffuses or moves around your face a little bit. I just adore this highlight a lot. Formula, one of my absolute favorites. This is one that if it went missing, I would notice right away because I use it so much and I just love it. Okay. The next one is a newer one to me, but when I thought about curating my collection, this one immediately sprang to mind and it's from Becca. It's their newer highlighter. It's called Pure Pearl Pearl Glow Luster Glow Powder. And I think this is a different formula for them because this doesn't feel or perform anything like the other highlighters that they have or that I have from them. But look how beautiful it looks. And when I saw this, I thought it was going to be very hard in the pan. It does look a little more pink. I don't know if you can see the pinkiness to it, but it's very pink. And I keep dipping into the same spot because I didn't want to mess it up. But it's a very, very thin formula. I am going to kind of give you a heavy swatch. I wish I could try all of these on. But it's a very, very thin formula for Becca. It It's not blinding like a lot of their other highlighters are. There it is blended out. Doesn't it look amazing? Let me blend out that Ciate one too. Um, so here's the Becca one right here. It's very just glowy and wet looking with a hint of pink. And it's a very different formula that I've ever seen from Becca because normally Becca highlighters for me, I put it on and it's like, boom, there's your highlighter. Like there's no way to really tone it down. 
And with these ones, the, this one anyway, it immediately goes on very light, but it looks glowy and wet and just really, really pretty with that tiny hint of pink in the background. I adore this highlighter a lot. It was something I wish I could have put in my yearly favorites, but I hadn't had it long enough. And I just love it. And it immediately came to mind when I uh, wanted to curate my highlighter collection. And this was one that I felt like needed to be there. I would notice if it went missing. The next two are uh, from Maybelline. These are both Master Chrome highlighters, Ma Master Chrome metallic highlighters. I have the shade 250 and the shade Molten Rose Gold. This one doesn't have a name. It just says 250 on it. But Molten Rose Gold is one of my most used, most loved, most favorite highlighters that I own. I'm going to do a little experiment. I'm going to put all my curated collection aside over here somewhere and see if I just reach for all that stuff, if I am as happy as I think I'm going to be with everything. But I think I'm going to be pretty happy. So this is what it looks like. The formula on this is very, very soft. I don't think it's meant to be swatched because it is very soft in the pan. If you go crazy with it, it's going to move the powder around. When you dip your brush in, it doesn't like explode out anywhere, but um, you know, it's gonna toss around some powder a little bit, but it's not too powdery. It's very, very rich. Like it almost feels like it could be a cream. It's just very pretty. There it is right there. Of course, I love a nice pinky toned highlighter. It's just my preference. There it is blended out a little bit. And I just love it. It can go soft, it can go intense. I love this one just so, so, so much. I use it all the time. Great formula. I hope Maybelline keeps these around forever because these are a home run highlighter formula from them. And then the other one that I was actually surprised I loved as much as I did is the 1250. This is more on the whiter gold side. It's like a white gold. And here it is in a big swatch. I will blend it out, of course. But this one doesn't have that pinky tone that I normally really enjoy. But I just love the lightness it brings to my face like, I don't know, lightness, but like brightness, I guess. It just brings this real nice amount of light white gold. Not even gold, like I, it's not gold, but I, I feel like it looks like white gold, I don't know. But a lot of the time, whiter highlighters or white highlighters that have that white tone to them look gray. Like when I move my face around, it looks gray and ashy and just weird. This one does not go that way on my skin, I cannot believe it, but it's definitely one of the best white, ish highlighters I ever used. Of course, formula is a home run. Um, I hope they continue to bring out different shades in this. These are the only two I have really fallen hardcore in love with, the two that if I went missing, I would notice immediately like, where are those two Maybelline highlighters? Like I dig for them all the time. I love them and use them regularly. And then the last highlighter I would keep if I curated my collection is a cream. I don't enjoy cream highlighters a lot on top of, um, I feel like I'm sitting weird. I don't enjoy uh, cream highlighters a whole lot on top of makeup. I don't feel like it just really works that much. The ColourPop ones are really good. I didn't bring one out here to kind of put on top of makeup. I noticed they don't mess with anything, but I wanted to keep one cream highlighter for the days I'm not wearing face makeup. Cause if I'm just wearing eyebrows and maybe some concealer, I still put highlighter on my cheekbones and my nose and my eyes and my eyelids. I just still want that glossy wet look on my skin, even with no makeup. And what I chose to keep is right here from Flesh. This is one of their little stick highlighters. This is the shade Startle. And this is one that is wonderful. This is the highlighter that I wanted to keep as my one cream highlighter. That's a big old swatch. But when I put this on, I do put it on my fingers first and then tap it on like this. I learned this technique from the Anna Edit. She would use this one highlighter all the time where she would rub it like this and then pat it on. And I thought that was so wonderful. So I do that all the time with this one. Um, but pat it on, kind of rub it between your fingers a little bit. It is a little bit, I don't want to say it's sticky, but it has a little bit of a tack to it. It doesn't dry down or anything. It stays glossy, wet, and kind of that glossy, wet look. Like, see how it looks? That's what I want my skin to look like when I don't have any makeup on. And it looks just great on bare skin. I love this one a lot. And that is the one I would keep for my cream. There are other really great cream ones I have. Physicians Formula makes a lovely one. This is one I almost decided to choose, but I went with Flesh. Um, and I just love it. So there you go. Those are my five highlighters I would keep. Can I just keep my hand up here doing this for 10 minutes? Would you guys be annoyed? Um, these are the five highlighters I would keep. I am perfectly happy with this curated highlighter collection. And I absolutely adore these. All the rest of the highlighters I have, I mean, there's one other one I'm going to keep, but it's in a face palette video, not a highlighter video. And I just love these. 
I absolutely adore these ones. Best favorite formulas, favorite colors. I love the brands. And I thought, yep, I'm keeping them. So that is that, my friends. Let me know some highlighters you would miss if your collection went missing. If you moved and the box fell off the truck and you didn't notice until you were one state away, what are the first things you would run out and purchase or um, notice were missing from your curated collection? I would love to know what they are. And thanks for watching this one. I will see you later in another video. Bye.